Welcome to Survival Horror Ambience, where the line between reality and nightmare blurs. Tonight, we embark on a journey into the heart of chaos and despair, through a chilling tale of survival in a world overrun by the undead. As you immerse yourself in the story, let the ambient sounds of a devastated Eastern European town draw you into the gritty reality of our protagonist's struggle. From the chaos of the initial outbreak to the desperate fight for survival, this is a tale of courage and horror like no other. Prepare yourself for a gripping narrative filled with tension, error, and a fight against the darkness. Now, let the story begin. Chapter 1, A Day in Tranquil Ruslana The sun hung lazily in the sky over the picturesque village of Navostka, nestled in the heart of Ruslana. Zoe and Kyla strolled along the cobbled streets, their laughter mingling with the lively chatter of the local. Quaint buildings, adorned with vibrant flowers, created a postcard-perfect backdrop to their vacation. Isn't this place amazing? Kyla said, taking in the charming scenery. It's like stepping into a fairy tale. I know, right? Zoe replied, snapping photos with her camera. And the people are so friendly. I haven't seen a single frown all day. They passed a bustling market where vendors displayed fresh fruits, colorful textiles, and handcrafted trinkets. Zoe paused at a stall selling intricate wooden carvings. Look at this, Zoe said, holding up a small ornate box. Gorgeous, how much? The vendor, an elderly man with a twinkle in his eye, responded in thickly accented English. For you, special price, 20 rubles. Deal, Zoe handed over the money, and the man wrapped the box in a colorful cloth. As they continued their exploration, they heard snippets of conversation about a land dispute between Ruslana and its neighbor, Morenia. The topic seemed to be a running theme in the village, but it was discussed with such casual indifference that Zoe and Kyla barely paid it any mind. Did you catch that? Kyla asked, as they walked past a cafe where two old men sipped their coffee. Yeah, something about a land dispute, Zoe said, waving her hand dismissively. It happens all the time. No one seems too worried. They settled into a cafe with outdoor seating, where a friendly waitress brought them steaming cups of rich, aromatic coffee. So, what do you think of Ruslana so far? Isla asked, taking a sip of her coffee. I love it, Zoe said. It's so different from anywhere I've been. People are so welcoming, and the food is incredible. You know, Kyla said, leaning back in her chair. I read online that this village is famous for its traditional festivals. We should definitely check one out before we leave. I'm in, Zoe agreed. Let's ask around and see if there's anything happening tonight. Their conversation shifted to the upcoming festival, and they chatted about their plans for the evening. As they enjoyed their coffee, a local musician began playing folk tunes on an accordion nearby, adding to the lively atmosphere. Look at this, Isla said pointing to a group of children dancing in the street. It's like a scene from a movie. Zoe laughed. This is exactly what I was hoping for. A relaxing vacation with a touch of local charm. As the sun began to set, casting a golden glow over the village, Zoe and Kyla made their way back to their guest house. The day had been perfect, filled with new experiences and friendly faces. The land dispute though mentioned often, seemed like a distant concern compared to the beauty and warmth of Ruslana. As they settled in for the night, Zoe couldn't help but feel a sense of contentment. Village was everything they had hoped for and more. Little did they know, their idyllic getaway was about to take an unexpected turn. Chapter 2 Midnight Revelry The night in Novostka was a different world altogether. The once quiet streets transformed into a lively scene of neon lights and music. Zoe and Kyla ventured out from their guest house, eager to experience the town's nightlight. Ready for some adventure? Isla asked, her eyes sparkling with excitement. Born ready? Zoe replied, adjusting her scarf and flashing a grin. Let's see what this place has to offer. They headed to a popular night spot called the Starry Lantern, a cozy bar with an inviting atmosphere. The facade was adorned with twinkling fairy lights, and the sound of upbeat music spilled onto the street. Inside, the bar was packed. Tables and chairs were arranged haphazardly, creating an intimate, almost chaotic vibe. A mix of traditional and modern music played from the speakers, and the air was thick with the scent of grilled meat and spiced drinks. This place is perfect, Zoe said, weaving through the crowd. It's like a blend of old world charm and modern party. 
Pila nodded in agreement. I've heard they make the best cocktails in town. Let's get one of those. They squeezed into the bar and ordered two drinks from the bartender. Cheerful young woman with a vibrant tattoo sleeve. Two Ruslanian specials, please. Ella said handing over their money. As they sipped their colorful concoctions, Zoe's gaze fell on a group of guys at the next table. They were chatting animatedly, their laughter punctuated by clinking glasses. One of them, with tousled brown hair and a charming smile, caught Zoe's eye. Check out Mr. Dreamy over there. Zoe whispered to Kyla, who followed her gaze with a mischievous grin. Kyla leaned in and said, You think he's as smooth as he looks? Poor Zoe could answer the guy, whose name turned out to be Alexei, approached their table. His accent was thick, but his English was surprisingly good. Good evening, ladies. Mind if I join you? Alexei asked with a friendly smile. Not at all, Kyla said, gesturing to the empty chairs. We'd love some company. Alexei introduced his friends, each one with a distinct personality. There was Dimitri, joker with a quick wit, and Pavel, quiet, brooding type who spoke only when necessary. But what brings you to our humble village? Alexei asked, pouring them each a drink. We're on vacation, Zoe said, just trying to soak up all the local flavor. And you're doing a great job of it, Dimitri chimed in, leaning back and throwing an arm around Pavel. Have you tried the fermented berries yet? It's a local delicacy. Kyla chuckled. We haven't, but we're game if you are. Conversation flowed easily, and as the night wore on, the group began to dance. The music shifted to a fast-paced tune, and Zoe and Kyla found themselves caught up in the infectious energy of the dance floor. Alexei and Dimitri showed off their dance moves, which ranged from impressively smooth to hilariously awkward. Nice moves. Zoe shouted over the music, laughing as Alexei attempted a spin and nearly collided with a passing waitress. Alexei grinned sheepishly. I guess I need more practice. Dimitri nudged him with a grin. Or less vodka. The night was filled with laughter, dancing, and the occasional clumsy stumble. Kyla and Zoe enjoyed every moment, reveling in the lively atmosphere and the new friendships they were making. As the clock inched towards midnight, the bar began to wind down and the crowd thinned. Alexei and Dimitri suggested a late-night stroll to a nearby lookout point. Dimitri said with a wink, You haven't seen Novostka until you've seen it from above. The girls agreed, and they walked together through the quieting streets, their laughter echoing in the cool night air. At the lookout point, they gazed out over the twinkling lights of the village below. This has been amazing, Kylo said, her arm around Zoe's shoulders. Best night ever. Definitely, Zoe agreed her eyes scanning the horizon, and who knows what adventures tomorrow will bring. As they said their goodbyes and promised to meet again, Zoe and Kyla felt a deep sense of contentment. The night had been everything they had hoped for and more, setting the stage for the rest of their unforgettable vacation. Chapter 3. Breakfast Interrupted The sun crept over the horizon, casting a warm glow over Novoska. Zoe and Kyla woke up in high spirits, still buzzing from the previous night's adventures. The village so tranquil in the morning light felt like a completely different place from the lively neon-lit scene they had enjoyed hours before. Did you sleep at all? Kyla asked, her voice still husky with sleep as she pulled on a light sweater. Barely, Zoe replied, stretching her arms above her head. But I'm not missing breakfast. Alexei and Dimitri promised to show us some authentic Ruslanian dishes. They quickly dressed and went to a small cafe where the guys were waiting for them. The cafe, called Baba's Kitchen, was tucked away in a side street, its entrance marked by an old wooden sign swaying gently in the breeze. Inside, the scent of freshly baked bread and spiced tea welcomed them. Good morning, ladies. Alexei greeted them with a wide smile, standing up to pull out their chairs. Did you sleep well? Well enough, Kyla said, grinning as she sat there. We're ready for round two. Table was already laden with food. Bliny, thin pancakes filled with sweet cheese and berries, cerniki, fried curd cheese patties served with sour cream, and steaming cups of strong black tea. Dimitri poured them each a glass of Foss, traditional fermented drink. Try this, he said, passing the glass to Zoe. It's an acquired taste, but you'll like it. Zoe took a sip and winced slightly at the tangy flavor, but nodded appreciatively. It's interesting, and get used to it. The conversation turned to Ruslanian culture. 
Alexei and Dmitri shared stories about local customs, traditional festivals, and the history of Novost. They laughed as Dmitri recounted a story about his grandmother's superstitions, which involved never stepping on a threshold without spitting over your shoulder first. So, is that why you were spitting last night? Zoe teased, raising an eyebrow. Absolutely, Dmitri said with a mock serious expression. We never know what kind of spirits are lurking. The morning was light and filled with laughter. The mood shifted abruptly when the sound of a distant alarm began to echo through the village. Cafe fell silent. Everyone looked up in confusion. What's that? Kyla asked, her smile fading. Alexei's expression darkened. Not good. Before they could ask more, the low rumble of airplanes filled the air, growing louder by the second. Sound was deafening as military aircraft roared overhead, their sleek forms cutting through the sky. Get down, Dmitri shouted, pulling Zoe and Kyla to the floor, just as the first bombs dropped. Ground shook violently and the air was filled with explosions. What the hell is happening? Zoe screamed, panic rising in her chest. I don't know, Lexei shouted back, but we need to move, now. They crawled to the back of the cafe, trying to stay low. Each explosion, and the once cozy atmosphere was now a war zone. Outside, they could hear people screaming, and the smell of smoke began to seep through the cracks in the doors and windows. Suddenly, a strange greenish gas started to swirl outside the cafe, beeping along the cobblestones like a living thing. Zoe's eyes widened in horror as she saw the gas move with unnatural speed, engulfing everything in its path. What is that? Kyla cried covering her mouth with her hand. Alexei didn't answer. His face was pale as he peeked out the window. The gas was spreading rapidly, filling the streets and seeping into building. We need to get inside a more secure building now, Dmitri said, his voice tense with urgency. They rushed out of the cafe, dodging falling debris and the spreading gas. The air was thick and heavy, making it hard to breathe. As they ran, Zoe glanced over her shoulder and saw something that made her blood run cold. People in the street, those who had been caught in the gas, were convulsing violently. Their eyes turned a sickly yellow, and they began to foam at the mouth. Then, with horrifying speed, they turned on each other, attacking with a ferocity that was inhuman. Oh my god, Zoe whispered, her voice trembling. They sprinted to a modern building that stood at the end of the street, was made its glass facade gleaming in the eerie light. Dimitri kicked the door open, and they all rushed inside, slamming it shut behind them. Upstairs quickly. Alexei urged, leading them to the stairwell. They ascended as fast as they could, the sound of breaking glass and growls echoing through the building. When they reached the top floor, they barricaded themselves in a conference room with large windows overlooking the chaos below. Zoe and Kyla collapsed onto the floor, gasping for breath while Alexei and Dmitri frantically tried to secure the door. Zoe pulled herself up and looked out the window, her hands shaking. The village she had admired just that morning was unrecognizable. The streets were filled with people attacking each other, tearing into flesh with their teeth, their eyes wild and rabid. They're, they're turning into monsters, Hyla said in a horrified whisper, her voice barely audible. Stay away from the windows. Dmitri warned, dragging a table across the room to block any potential entry points. We need to figure out what's going on. Zoe backed away from the window, her mind racing. This wasn't just a land dispute. Whatever was happening in Ruslana was something far more sinister. As they huddled together in the dimly lit room, the sounds of the chaos outside continued to grow. The once peaceful village of Novaska had become a nightmare, and there was no telling what horrors the next hour would bring. Chapter 4. Unleashed Madness The once serene view of Novostka had turned into a scene of utter chaos. The streets below were filled with the grotesque sight of people, once normal, now transformed into vicious monsters by the strange gas, tearing into each other with savage ferocity. The glass windows of the modern building offered a horrifying panorama, but Zoe and Kyla couldn't look away. They're killing each other. Kyla whispered, es that, her voice barely audible over the sounds of carnage outside. Alexei, standing beside them, was equally stunned. This isn't possible. This shouldn't be happening. The rabid people outside weren't just attacking each other. They had started to target those who hadn't been exposed to the gas. 
From their vantage point, the group could see some of the unaffected villagers running for their lives, only to be overwhelmed and torn apart by the maddened crowd. We need to stay quiet, Dimitri said, his voice tense as he moved away from the window. They notice us. His warning came too late. One of the rabid people, a woman with bloodied clothes and yellow glazed eyes, looked up. She saw them, and a feral snarl escaped her lips. She screamed, drawing the attention of others nearby. Get away from the windows, Alexei shouted. The sound of breaking glass cut him off. The infected people hurled themselves at the building, their crazed strength allowing them to shatter the windows. Glass rained down, and the group instinctively backed away. It wasn't fast enough. The rabid woman and several others clambered inside with unnatural speed, their eyes locked onto the group. Run, Dimitri yelled, pushing Zoe and Kyla towards the door, but the infected were too fast. They swarmed Dimitri, their hands clawing at him as he fought them off. Zoe screamed as one of them sank its teeth into Dimitri's neck. Ripping his throat out with a sickening crunch, blood sprayed across the floor and Dimitri fell, choking on his blood. As the adrenaline slowly ebbed, the reality of their situation sank in. They were alone, surrounded by madness, and they had no idea how to escape. We need to find out what's happening, Alexei said, his voice steadier now as he tried to take control of the situation. There might be a way out of this, but we have to keep moving. Kyla nodded, still trembling but determined. We'll do whatever it takes. We're not dying here. Zoe met Alexei's eyes and nodded in agreement. They were in this together, and whatever horrors lay ahead, they would face them as a team. But as they prepared themselves to leave the small room and face the unknown, the only certainty they had was that the nightmare was far from over. Chapter 5, A Moment's Respite The room upstairs was cold and dimly lit, the only light coming from the fading daylight that seeped through a small, cracked window. Horrors outside had not abated, for now, they were safe, trapped, but safe. Zoe and Kyla sat on the floor, their backs against the wall, trying to calm their racing heart. Kyla's hands shook uncontrollably, and Zoe's eyes were wide with fear. The day had started so normally, and now it was like they were in a nightmare they couldn't wake up from. Alexei, trying to keep his own fear in check, rummaged through an old dresser in the corner. The drawers creaked loudly, echoing in the quiet room. Finally, pulled out two jackets. Slightly oversized and a bit dusty. Warm. Here, he said, handing them to the girls. It's getting colder as night approaches. Put these on. Zoe took the orange jacket, slipping it over her shoulders. It was large enough to cover her completely, and despite the rough material, the warmth was a welcome relief. Kyla took the purple one, wrapping it tightly around herself. The jacket was a bit too big for her, but it made her feel somewhat protected as if it could shield her from the terror outside. Alexei found a blazer for himself, pulling it on with a sigh. He looked at the girls, their faces pale and frightened, and knew he had to do something to lift their spirits, even if just a little. Not exactly fashion forward, but it'll do, said with a small smile. Zoe managed a weak laugh. Yeah, I don't think this look is going to make it to the runway. Isla chuckled softly, though her voice still trembled. I don't know. I think we could start a new trend. Apocalypse chic. Alexei grinned, glad to see them smiling, even if just for a moment. I like it. Maybe we'll set a trend and take over the fashion world when this is all over. They all laughed, the sound a brief but needed break from the horror that surrounded them. For a few moments, they allowed themselves to forget the madness outside, finding comfort in the warmth of the jackets and each other's company. As the laughter died down, the reality of their situation crept back in. The room grew quieter, and the cold seemed to seep into their bones. Alexei looked at the girls, both huddled in their jackets, their earlier panic giving way to exhaustion. This, this is unbelievable. Zoe finally said, her voice small. How did this happen? We were just on vacation, and now... Alexei nodded, sitting down next to them. I know, I never imagined something like this could happen here. Novoska is a peaceful place, but the conflict with our neighbor, Vostograd, has been simmering for years. They've always wanted our land and there have been skirmishes and disputes, but this, this is something new. Vostograd? Kyla asked, her brow furrowing. Why would they do this? Why use whatever that gas was? Alexei shook his head. I don't know. 
conflicts have always been over territory, over old grudges. But this, this gas, it's like nothing we've ever seen. It's turning people into monsters. I can't believe anyone would use something like that. They wanted to send a message. No, he said softly. They wanted to show their power, scare people. It worked. The room fell silent again as they each processed the gravity of their situation. Outside, the night had fully fallen and the sounds of the madness had dulled, though they knew the danger was still out there, lurking in the dark. Alexei could see the fear in the girl's eyes, and he knew they needed to hold on to some hope if they were going to survive that. We can't stay here forever, he said, breaking the silence, but there might be a way out. Zoe and Kyla looked at him, hope flickering in their eyes. The roofs, Alexei continued. These buildings are close enough together. If we can make it to the roof, we might be able to move from one building to the next, get out of the main area, and find somewhere safer. But what if we fall? Or what if those things see us? Hyla asked, her voice trembling. We'll have to be careful, Alexei said, his tone gentle but firm. But it's better than staying here, waiting for them to break down the door. Zoe nodded, determination returning to her face. We'll do it. We'll stick together and get through this. Kyla swallowed hard but nodded as well. Okay, let's do it. Alexei gave them a reassuring smile. We'll rest for a bit, gather our strength, and then we'll make our move. Together. As they huddled together in the cold room, the fear was still there, but it was tempered by the resolve to survive. They didn't know what awaited them on those rooftops, but they knew they had to try. And in that small, fragile hope, they found the strength to face whatever came next. Chapter 6. Rooftop Escape the night air was biting cold as Alexei pushed open the creaky window. He glanced back at Zoe and Kyla, giving them a nod of encouragement. They were pale and wide-eyed, but they were ready. They had to be. Stay close and be careful, Alexei whispered as he climbed out first, his feet finding purchase. On the narrow ledge outside, Zoe followed, gripping the window frame tightly as she stepped out into the night. The drop below was dizzying. The dark streets lit only by the occasional flicker of firelight from burning buildings. Isla came last, her breath catching as she looked down. Don't look down, Zoe murmured, taking Kyla's hand. Just focus on Alexei. Alexei moved cautiously along the ledge until he reached the edge of the roof. The buildings were packed tightly together in this part of town. The gaps between them were still wide enough to be dangerous. He reached back to help Zoe and Kyla up, pulling them onto the roof. Okay, Alexei said, his voice low but steady. We're going to stick close and move quickly. If we keep to the shadows, we might avoid being seen. The girls nodded, fear etched on their faces but determination in their eyes. They had no choice but to trust Alexei's plan. They began to make their way across the rooftops, Alexei leading the way with Zoe and Kyla close behind. The roofs were uneven, some sloping dangerously while others were flat but littered with debris. Every step was a calculated risk, danger of slipping or being seen hanging over them. The night was eerily quiet, the only sounds the distant crackling of flames and the occasional scream that pierced the darkness. The once lively town was now a hellscape, and the weight of it all pressed down on them every careful step they took. As they approached the edge of another roof, Alexei held up his hand signaling them to stop. He peered over the edge, scanning the area below. The streets were mostly empty, but the occasional shadowy figure moved in the distance, shambling and stumbling with unnatural jerks. Looks clear, he whispered, moving on. Just as they started to cross the next roof, a noise, clatter of metal, echoed through the night. Zoe froze, her breath catching in her throat. The sound had come from behind them. Alexei whipped around, eyes wide with alarm. Figure stood at the far end of the roof they had just crossed. A man, but not a man. His eyes were wild, glowing with an unnatural fury, his mouth twisted in a snarl. His clothes were tattered, blood-stained, and his skin had a sickly grayish hue. He's infected, Kyla whispered, her voice trembling with terror. The infected man let out a guttural scream, a sound filled with rage and desperation. In a flash, he bolted towards them, his movements erratic but fast. Too fast. Run, Alexei shouted, grabbing Zoe's hand and pulling her forward. Kyla was right behind them, her heart pounding in her ears. They sprinted across the rooftops, the uneven terrain making every step treacherous. The infected man was gaining on them, 
growls growing louder, more savage. They could feel the rooftop vibrating under his feet as he closed the distance. Faster, Alexei urged, leading them toward the edge of the roof. The gap between this building and the next was wider than the others. There's no way we can jump that. Isla cried out in panic. We have to. Alexei yelled back. He didn't hesitate. With a burst of speed, he launched himself across the gap, landing hard on the other side. Zoe followed, adrenaline coursing through her veins. She pushed off the edge with all her strength, her feet leaving the ground as she flew across the void. She landed on the opposite roof, but her foot slipped on loose gravel. She screamed as she began to slide backward, her hands clawing at the edge. Zoe? Alexei lunged forward, grabbing her arm just as she was about to fall. He gritted his teeth, using all his strength to pull her up. Zoe gasped, her heart hammering in her chest as she clung to him, trembling. Got you, Alexei breathed, pulling her to safety. Kyla made the jump next, by barely landing on her feet, but managing to stay upright. The infected man reached the edge of the roof, just as they scrambled to their feet. With another enraged scream, he leaped across the gap. But he wasn't as lucky as they had been. His foot caught on the edge, and with a blood-curdling shriek, plummeted into the darkness below. The sickening thud of his body hitting the ground echoed up to them. Three of them stood there for a moment, panting, staring at the spot where the man had fallen. The relief was palpable, but it was short-lived. We need to keep moving, Alexei said, his voice steady but urgent. They hurried across the last roof, their hearts still pounding. As they reached the other side, they found themselves standing on the roof of the local police department. Here, Alexei said, gesturing to a fire escape on the side of the building. We can get inside from here. It might be safer than out here. Zoe nodded. Still shaken, but grateful for a place to hide, they carefully climbed down the fire escape, one by one, until they reached the window that led into the police department. Alexei pushed it open, and they all slipped inside, shutting the window behind them. For now, they were safe. The terror outside hadn't ended, and they knew it was only a matter of time before they had to face it again. Chapter 7 Armored and Armed The inside of the police station was a mess. Papers were scattered everywhere, chairs overturned, and the faint smell of smoke lingered in the air. It was clear that whatever force had swept through the town had left its mark here as well. The small town police force had probably done everything they could to maintain order. They were no match for the chaos that had erupted. This place has been picked clean, Hyla murmured, stepping over a pile of papers. Her voice echoed slightly in the eerily quiet station sending a chill down Zoe's spine. Not surprised, Alexei said, eyes scanning the room for anything useful. This town didn't have many officers to begin with. They were probably all out trying to handle the situation when things went south. Zoe moved cautiously through the debris, her eyes darting to every shadow. Her heart was still racing from their rooftop escape, but she forced herself to focus. They needed supplies, anything that could help them survive. Look what I found. Alexei's voice cut through her thoughts. She turned to see him holding a 12-gauge shotgun. The metal gleamed dully in the dim light, a few scratches marring its surface but otherwise in good condition. Alexei checked the chamber, then the barrel, the movements sure and practiced. My grandpa used to take me hunting when I was a kid, Alexei said, a faint smile tugging at his lips despite the situation. Never thought those skills would come in handy like this. Zoe forced a small smile in return. Though her mind was still reeling, she pushed through the remains of what must have been a storage room, her eyes landing on something hanging on a hook. A stab vest. It wasn't much, but it was better than nothing. She pulled it down and slipped it on, the weight of it oddly reassuring. Meanwhile, Kyla was rummaging through a drawer in what had once been an officer's desk. Her eyes widened when she pulled out a sleek, black pistol. MK2 with a bullet suppressor. She held it up, examining it with a mix of curiosity and unease. Uh, Alexei? Isla called, her voice shaky. How do I check if it's loaded? Alexei walked over, taking the gun from her hand. Here, let me show you, his tone patient. He pressed the magazine release, catching the clip as it slid out. This is the clip. He pointed to the two bullets inside. You've only got two rounds in here. Not much, but it could save your life. 
He handed the gun back to her, showing her how to slide the clip back in until it clicked. Just aim and squeeze the trigger, but only if you have to, he added, his eyes locking onto hers to make sure she understood. Isla nodded, fingers trembling slightly as she took the gun back. Thanks, she whispered, trying to steady her nerves. She slipped the gun into her pocket, hoping she wouldn't have to use it. They continued to search the station, every creak and groan of the old building, setting them on edge. Felt like the walls themselves were closing in, pressing down on them with the weight of the outside horrors. Then, as they moved toward what appeared to be the radio room, crackling sound filled the air. They all froze, listening intently as a voice emerged from the static. Military announcement. The country has been hit by a biological weapon. All survivors are advised to head to the nearest safe zones. Biological weapon has been deployed. Safe zones are established. Please proceed to the following locations. Vostok Military Base. The voice droned on, listing more locations, but Alexei's eyes widened at the mention of Vostok. He turned to the girls, his expression a mixture of relief and urgency. I know that base, he said. It's not far from here. Maybe a day's travel if we're fast. Zoe nodded her mind already racing with plans. If they could reach that base, they might have a chance. Getting there was another story. Isla found a small backpack in the corner of the room and began stuffing it with the few supplies they had managed to scavenge. A box of buckshot with six rounds, four cans of food, and a few matches. It wasn't much, but it was all they had. As they prepared to leave, the tension in the air grew thick, almost suffocating. They were just about to make their way out when a noise, a low, guttural growl, echoed through the station. Alexei's hand shot up, signaling for silence. They froze, listening. The growl came again, closer this time. Zoe's heart pounded in her chest, and she felt the blood drain from her face. There's someone in here, Kyla whispered, her voice trembling. Not someone, Alexei corrected grimly. Something. He motioned for them to stay back as he crept forward, shotgun in hand. The growling grew louder, more feral, as he rounded the corner into the main lobby. There, half hidden in the shadows, was an infected person. Creature was hunched over, its back to them. The smell of decay and blood was unmistakable. It was feasting on something, or someone, its movements erratic and wild. Lexei moved with quiet precision, inching closer to the infected. Breath was steady, his grip on the shotgun firm. Girls watched, their hearts in their throats, as Alexei raised the shotgun, but instead of firing, he lowered it slightly, then took a step closer. With a swift, fluid motion, he swung the shotgun like a club, slamming it into the back of the infected's head. The creature let out a strangled gasp before collapsing to the floor, lifeless. Let's go, Alexei whispered, his voice tight with the adrenaline of the moment. They didn't need to be told twice. The group moved quickly and quietly, slipping out of the station and into the cold night air. The street was eerily quiet, the only sound the distant wail of a siren. But the silence didn't comfort them. It only made the reality of their situation more stark, more terrifying. As they stepped out onto the street, they knew there was no turning back. Their only hope now was to make it to the military base and survive whatever horrors lay between them and safety. Chapter 8 The Howling Dread the cold wind sliced through the trees, carrying with it the scent of pine and the distant echo of a world gone mad. Zoe shivered, pulling her oversized orange jacket tighter around her as they left the small town behind. The buildings faded into the distance, replaced by the looming shadows of the dense forest. Kyla walked beside her, glancing nervously at the darkened woods, her purple jacket barely warding off the chill. They hadn't spoken much since leaving the police station. The reality of what they were doing, hiking through an unfamiliar forest while the world crumbled, was terrifying. But as they continued, the sky began to lighten. First rays of the sun peeked over the distant mountains, painting the horizon in shades of pink and orange. For a brief, surreal moment, the beauty of the sunrise made them forget their dire situation. Look at that, Zoe whispered, her breath visible in the cold air. It's beautiful. Isla nodded, a small smile tugging at her lips. If we weren't running for our lives, I'd say it's the perfect sunrise. Alexei, leading the group, glanced back at them. Enjoy it while you can, he said, his tone serious. But we need to keep moving. 
As the sun climbed higher, the warmth of the light provided little comfort against the cold, but it gave them a momentary sense of peace. For just a second, the world felt like it used to. A world of sunrises, early morning hikes, and simple pleasures. Hyla's thoughts drifted back to the present, and she looked around at the dense woods they were entering. Why are we going through the woods? she asked, her voice filled with uncertainty. Wouldn't it be faster to take the road? Alexei shook his head. The roads will be full of cars, people who didn't make it out in time. He explained, they'll be blocked, dangerous, forest is safer. Hyla swallowed hard, realizing he was right. The roads would be choked with the remnants of panicked escapes, cars piled up, maybe even bodies. The thought made her stomach churn. The group pressed on, the silence of the woods only broken by the crunch of their footsteps on the fallen leaves. Cold air nipped at their skin, and the sense of isolation grew with each step. The girls exchanged glances, their fear barely kept at bay. Then, out of nowhere, a sound pierced the quiet. A low, mournful howl echoed through the trees, making the hairs on the back of Zoe's neck stand up. Isla froze, her eyes wide with fear. What was that? Zoe whispered, voice trembling. A wolf, Alexei replied quietly, his voice tense. They're closer than I thought. Another howl joined the first, and then another. A chorus of wolves filled the air, their eerie calls sending shivers down the group's spines. Alexei's eyes darted around the forest, his body tensing as he listened intently. They're hunting, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. The reality of their situation hit Zoe like a punch to the gut. In this new world, the infected weren't the only threat. Nature itself had turned against them, the wild reclaiming the land as civilization crumbled. The wolves, once fearful of humans, now saw them as prey. Before they could react, the howls grew louder, closer. The wolves were moving in, their hunger driving them toward the group. Zoe's heart pounded in her chest, her breath coming in short, sharp gasps. What do we do? Hyla asked, panic rising in her voice. We run, Alexei said, voice firm. Stay close and don't look back. Without another word, the group took off adrenaline surging through their veins as they sprinted through the woods. The sound of the wolves grew louder, their footsteps swift and sure. Zoe's legs burned as she pushed herself to keep up with Alexei and Kyla, fear of being caught driving her forward. Forest around them blurred as they ran, branches scratching at their faces, cold air biting at their skin. Fear was overwhelming. They had no choice. It was run or die. Zoe risked a glance back and felt a surge of terror. She couldn't see the wolves yet, but she could hear them, the sound of their paws pounding against the ground, their growls echoing through the trees. Keep going, Alexei shouted, his voice strained. The group pushed harder, their bodies aching, their lungs burning. The wolves were almost upon them when they reached a small clearing. With no time to think, they raced across it, Alexei leading them towards a denser part of the forest, hoping to lose their pursuers among the thick underbrush. As they reached the other side of the clearing, a loud crack behind them made Zoe stumble. She turned her head just in time to see one of the wolves burst through the trees, its eyes locked on them. Heath bared. Go, go, go. Alexei urged, grabbing Zoe's arm and pulling her forward. They dove back into the trees, the sound of the wolves still hauntingly close behind them. The world around them was a blur of green and brown as they ran, every instinct screaming at them to keep moving, to survive. Zoe's legs felt like they were on fire, her breath coming in ragged gasps, but she couldn't stop. The fear of the wolves was too great. They were predators, and she was prey. As they reached a thicker part of the forest, Alexei suddenly veered to the right, leading them down a narrow, winding path. The wolves were still close, their howls filling the air but the path was too narrow for them to follow quickly. Finally, after what felt like hours of running, the howls began to fade. The group slowed to a stop, gasping for breath, their bodies trembling with exhaustion and fear. Zoe collapsed against a tree, her heart pounding in her chest. We lost them, Alexei said, his voice hoarse. For now, Pyla nodded, her face pale, her hands shaking. What? What do we do now? We keep moving, Alexei replied his eyes scanning the forest around them. We can't stay here. They'll come back. The group exchanged nervous glances, the weight of their situation settling in. The world they knew was gone, replaced by one where the rules of survival had changed. 
the infected were just one threat among many. The wilderness itself had become their enemy. As they prepared to move again, the sun finally broke free of the mountains, casting long shadows across the forest floor. The light was no longer comforting. It only served to highlight the dangers that lay ahead. They had survived the night, but the day promised its own horrors. Chapter 9 Sanctuary in Shadows The cold wind continued to whip through the dense forest as the group pressed deeper into the woods, their breaths visible in the frigid morning air. The sun had fully risen now, casting long shadows between the towering trees, but the fleeting beauty of the sunrise had long since faded, placed by the pressing need to survive. After what felt like hours of trekking, Alexei signaled for the group to stop. They emerged into a small clearing, revealing an abandoned cabin nestled among the trees. The structure looked weathered but sturdy, its windows boarded up, and the door hanging slightly ajar. It offered a glimmer of hope, a temporary sanctuary from the dangers lurking outside. We need to check it out, Alexei said, his voice steady but tense. We can rest here for a while, gather our strength. The girls exchanged nervous glances but nodded in agreement. They approached the cabin cautiously, every sense on high alert. The door creaked loudly as Zoe pushed it open, the sound echoing ominously in the silent woods. Inside, the cabin was dim and musty, filled with the remnants of lives long abandoned. Dust-covered furniture stood in disarray, and spiderwebs clung to the corners of the room. Despite the neglect, it was clear that the previous occupants had left in a hurry, leaving behind scattered belongings and signs of hurried departure. We need to salvage whatever we can, Alexei said, moving towards a rickety table. He began rummaging through drawers, pulling out an old first aid kit. This could be useful. Hyla knelt beside him, helping to sift through the debris. Look at all this stuff, she muttered, finding assorted medical supplies. At least we have some basic tools to treat injuries. Doe explored the rest of the cabin, her eyes landing on a dusty fireplace. She began gathering dry bark and old clothes scattered nearby, carefully arranging them to start a fire. With practiced efficiency, she struck a match, igniting the kindling. Flames flickered to life, bringing warmth and a semblance of comfort to the cold interior. As the fire crackled, Alexei made his way to a nearby hunting stand, a small loft area with a view of the surrounding forest. Inside, they discovered an old map, yellowed with age and marked with various notes and symbols. He spread it out on the table, studying it intently. This map shows the layout of the area, Alexei explained, tracing his finger along the marked path. If we follow these trails, we can navigate more safely and avoid the main roads where the wolves are more likely to roam. Hyla found a compass among the scattered items and handed it to Alexei. This should help us keep our bearings, she said, her voice steady despite the exhaustion etched on her face. They shared a can of beans they had salvaged earlier, the simple meal providing a brief respite from their constant fear. As they ate, Zoe rummaged through a closet and pulled out an old hunting jack. Holding it up, she couldn't resist making a joke to lighten the mood. Look what I found, she said with a smirk, slipping into the oversized jacket. Maybe this will make me look less like prey and more like a badass survivor. Alexei chuckled. The tension momentarily easing. Not bad, he replied, glancing over at her. You'd make a fine hunter with that. Zoe tossed the jacket back to him, her smile fading as reality set back in. Thanks, Alexei. It's nice to have a bit of humor right now. They moved to the kitchen area, where a pantry stocked with canned goods caught their attention. Among the supplies, they found a few potatoes. With the fire now fully established, Zoe carefully baked the potatoes the aroma providing a comforting reminder of home amidst the chaos. As the day progressed, they worked together to fortify their temporary sanctuary. Alexei found a sturdy broom in the corner and firmly tied a knife to its handle, creating a makeshift spear. We need to be prepared for anything, he stated, ensuring the weapon was secure. This might give us a better chance, if we encounter any threats. The hours slipped by as they fortified the cabin, their movements a blend of necessity and cautious optimism. The initial fear and panic had given way to a tentative sense of hope, bolstered by their teamwork and the small victories they had achieved. After three long hours, the group felt a renewed sense of readiness. The fire provided warmth and light, 
Map and compass offered direction, and their makeshift weapons gave them a measure of protection. They knew that the dangers outside were far from over, but within the walls of the abandoned cabin, they had carved out a fragile sanctuary. We should head out soon, Alexei said, his voice resolute. We can't stay here forever. The sooner we reach Vostok, the better our chances of finding safety. Kyla nodded, her eyes meeting his with a shared determination. Agreed. We need to move before nightfall. Zoe took a deep breath, feeling the weight of their journey pressing down on her shoulders. We're ready, she said, her voice firm. Let's go. As they gathered their belongings and prepared to leave, the sun cast long shadows across the forest floor, signaling the approach of evening. The group felt more prepared for the challenges ahead, their bonds strengthened by the trials they had faced together. With one last glance at their temporary refuge, they stepped out into the forest once more, the path to Vostok military base stretching out before them. The horrors of the new world awaited, but they faced them with newfound resilience and the hope of finding a safe haven. Chapter 10 Shelter in the Storm The group trudged through the dense forest, the trees thinning as they approached the edge of the military base. The imposing gates of Vostok military base loomed ahead, surrounded by high walls topped with barbed wire. It was a stark contrast to the wilderness they had just traversed, offering a promise of safety that felt almost surreal. Alexei led the way, his eyes scanning the surroundings as they approached the guarded entrance. Soldiers in fatigues, armed to the teeth, stood watch, their expressions hard and trot, unyielding. The group's arrival was met with suspicion, but Alexei quickly explained their situation, and after a tense moment, they were allowed inside. The base was a hive of activity. Men and women in military uniforms moved with purpose, and the distant sounds of machinery and barking orders filled the air. The contrast between the chaotic outside world and the organized efficiency within the base walls was striking. Welcome to Vostok, a soldier said, his voice muffled behind the plastic shield of his hazmat suit. We need to process you before you can enter the main compound. Follow me. The group was led to a small building where they were instructed to remove their coats and line up. Isla shivered, not just from the cold, but from the unsettling feeling of being scrutinized. Soldiers in hazmat suits moved efficiently, taking blood samples and asking them a series of questions. Have you experienced any symptoms? Nausea, dizziness, unusual aggression? One of them asked as they swabbed the inside of Kyla's mouth. No, Isla replied, trying to keep her voice steady. We're fine. A soldier nodded, moving on to Zoe, who winced as a needle pricked her arm for a blood sample. The process was quick but thorough, every movement precise and practiced. After what felt like an eternity, they were handed thick, insulated coats, much better suited for the biting cold than what they had been wearing. The relief was palpable as they slipped into the warm garments, feeling a small measure of comfort, first time in days. All right, the soldier in charge said, his tone softening slightly. They'll be escorted to the mess hall. Get some food and rest. You're safe here. The word lingered in the air, almost foreign after everything they had endured. The group was led to a large mess hall where the smell of cooked food wafted through the air. It wasn't anything fancy and bacon and bread, but after their grueling journey, it tasted like a feast. They sat at a long table, the warmth of the building seeping into their bones. For the first time in days, they allowed themselves to relax, the tension in their shoulders easing slightly as they ate. This almost feels normal, Zoe said between bites, her voice tinged with disbelief. Yeah, I almost forgot what that was like, Kyla replied, her tone softer now faint smile playing on her lips. The weight of fear and uncertainty seemed to lift, if only for a moment. Alexei, who had been quiet throughout the meal, finally spoke. We've made it through the worst, he said, his voice firm. We'll figure out what to do next. Just as the group started to believe they were finally safe, the peace of the base was shattered by the sound of alarms blaring through the compound. The once steady hum of activity turned into chaos as soldiers scrambled into action. What's happening? Hyla asked, eyes wide with fear. Alexei stood up, his expression turning grim as he listened to the distant sounds of gunfire and shouting. Stay here, he ordered, his voice leaving no room for argument. 
The group huddled together as the chaos outside grew louder. Through the mess hall windows, they could see a party of civilians outside the base, desperately trying to get in. They weren't alone. Infected were closing in, their crazed eyes and savage snarls sending chills down their spines. A squad of soldiers rushed to the gate, weapons drawn as the infected attacked. The soldiers opened fire, bullets ripping through the air as they tried to hold back the tide of madness. The scene was horrifying. People who were once normal, now twisted into something monstrous, throwing themselves at the gate with no regard for their own lives. Those people, Zoe whispered, unable to tear her eyes away from the carnage. They're gone, Alexei said grimly, watching as the soldiers finally managed to push the infected back. The gate was secured, but not without loss. Some of the civilians had been caught in the crossfire, their bodies lying still on the ground. The group remained silent, a brief moment of respite shattered by the brutal reality of their situation. The safety of the base was real, but it was fragile, constantly under threat from the horrors outside. After the chaos subsided, the soldiers returned to their posts, and the mess hall slowly returned to its previous state. But the sense of normalcy was gone, replaced by a heavy silence as the survivors processed what they had just witnessed. Let's get some rest. Alexei said finally, his voice devoid of its usual strength. We need to be ready for whatever comes next. The group nodded, too exhausted to argue. As they were led to their quarters, the weight of their journey pressed down on them once more. The base might offer temporary safety, but the world outside had changed, and they knew there was no going back to the way things were before. Chapter 11 Fragile Connection the morning sun filtered through the small window of the barracks, casting a soft glow over the room. The night had been restless, filled with haunting dreams and the echoes of distant gunfire, but the promise of finally contacting their fam brought a glimmer of hope to Zoe and Kyla. The two girls, along with Alexei, were led to a communication room in the base. The space was utilitarian, with rows of computers and phones set up for the soldiers and civilians alike. A stern-faced soldier handed them each a satellite phone, its instructions brief and to the point. You have five minutes. Make them count. Zoe and Kyla exchanged nervous glances before dialing their families. Connection crackled with static. A harsh reminder of how far they were from home, but the sound of familiar voices on the other end was enough to bring tears to their eyes. Kyla, is that you? Her brother's voice was filled with relief but also a tension that made her heart sink. Yeah, it's me, Isla replied, her voice trembling. We're okay, we're at a military base, but what's happening back home? Her brother sighed, and she could hear the weight of his worry in that single breath. It's all over the news, Kai. They're saying a terrorist group stole some kind of virus from a CDC lab in your country. The UN is stepping in, but it's chaos. We've been so worried about you. Hyla felt a lump in her throat as she listened, her mind reeling. Terrorist group? How could this happen? They don't know for sure. Brother continued. But it's bad, Kai. The report's coming in. People are saying it's worse than anything they've seen. They think... The line suddenly went dead. Cutting off whatever her brother was about to say, Isla stared at the phone in disbelief, pulse quickening. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Zoe, on the phone next to her, had just finished speaking with her parents. Their voices filled with the same mix of relief and fear. She looked over at Kyla, concern etched on her face. What happened? The call just cut off, Kyla muttered, her heart pounding. He was about to say something about the virus, and then... Before she could finish her sentence, the low rumble of an airplane filled the air, growing louder with each passing second. The girls exchanged a panicked glance as the soldiers in the room suddenly sprang into action. Get down. Masks on now. One of the soldiers shouted, his voice commanding and urgent. Without hesitation, the girls followed orders, pulling on the gas masks that were shoved into their hands by the soldier. The room descended into chaos as the rumble overhead became a deafening roar. The walls of the base seemed to tremble as bombs began to drop, the ground shaking beneath their feet. Through the small window, they could see the familiar haze spreading across the base. The same ominous fog that had turned people into monsters before. 
The scene outside quickly devolved into madness as those who hadn't managed to mask in time began to convulse, their bodies twisting in unnatural ways. Zoe's breath caught in her throat as she watched the transformation unfold. Soldiers who had been standing guard moments ago were now tearing at their skin, their eyes turning bloodshot and crazed. The screams that filled the air were not human, they were the cries of something far more primal, something that had lost all sense of humanity. Alexei? Zoe shouted, fear gripping her as she turned to him. What's happening? It's the gas. Alexei yelled over the chaos, his face pale beneath the mask. They must have dropped it again. We need to get out of here before. Before he could finish, one of the newly turned soldiers slammed against the window, his face contorted in rage. The glass cracked under the force of the impact, spider webbing but holding for the moment. The creature's eyes were wild, locked onto them with a hunger that sent shivers down their spines. We can't stay here, Alexei barked, grabbing Zoe and Kyla by the arms. We have to move. The three of them bolted from the room, their hearts racing as the sounds of violence echoed through the base. The halls were filled with chaos, soldiers who had not yet changed desperately trying to fight off their former comrade, while others succumbed to the gas, their minds overtaken by the same madness. As they ran, Zoe's mind raced, trying to make sense of the fragments of information she had heard. Terrorist group, a stolen virus, the UN's involvement. It all felt like a nightmare, one they couldn't wake up from. They turned a corner, nearly colliding with a group of soldiers in hazmat suits. This way, one of them shouted, directing them toward a safer area. But as they fled, the reality was clear. There was no true safety anymore. The base had been compromised, and the horrors they had witnessed in the town were now inside these walls. The world outside had crumbled, and the enemy was no longer just human. As they reached a more secure section of the base, the group huddled together gasping for breath. The sounds of the infected soldiers still echoed in their ears. For now, they were safe. For now, they had survived. But as Zoe glanced at Alexei, the determination in his eyes told her one thing. This was far from over. And whatever lay ahead, they would need every ounce of strength they had to face it. Chapter 13 Final Stand the room was a battleground of chaos as the infected crashed through the doors, their guttural roars and frenzied movements creating a terrifying symphony of horror. Victor and Alexei fought bravely, their weapons blazing as they tried to hold the line, but the horde was unrelenting. Zoe, her hands trembling, aimed her shotgun with unsteady resolve. Each blast pushed back the infected momentarily, giving the group fleeting moments of respite. Kyla, her face pale with fear, clutched a set of Humvee keys tightly. Earlier, Victor had discovered the keys in a drawer while rummaging through the police station, a rare stroke of luck in their grim situation. Now, those keys were their last hope for escape. Stay close, Victor shouted over the cacophony. His voice strained as he fought with a tactical knife after his AK-47 ran dry. He was becoming increasingly desperate as the infected closed in on them. Alexei worked frantically to hotwire the Humvee, his face drenched with sweat. With a burst of effort, he managed to get the engine roaring to life. Relief was short-lived as the Humvee's door was suddenly wrenched open, and infected hands grabbed Alexei, dragging him out of the vehicle. Alexei! Zoe screamed, her heart sinking as she saw her friend being pulled away by the infected. Desperation fueled Zoe's actions. She fired her shotgun wildly, her shots tearing through the infected and creating a temporary barricade. Kyla, shaking with fear, struggled to steady herself as she held the keys Victor had found. The Humvee was their only chance, and she was determined to use it. In a final act of defiance, Victor pulled a grenade pin from his belt and hurled it into the crowd of infected. The grenade exploded with a deafening roar, scattering bodies and debris in every direction. The blast left Victor mortally wounded his body battered and bloodied. Get out. Go now. Victor's voice was barely audible as he fell to the floor, the light fading from his eyes. Zoe and Kyla, their hearts racing, rushed toward the Humvee. Kyla scrambled into the driver's seat, the keys clutched tightly in her hand. Zoe climbed into the passenger seat, eyes darting around the room for any sign of Alexa. Chaos around them was overwhelming, but there was no time to waste. Zoe spotted Alexei being dragged toward the gate, 
struggling against the infected. With a surge of adrenaline, she aimed her shotgun and fired, her shots clearing a path through the infected. But it was too late. Alexei had already been pulled out of sight. No, Zoe screamed, her voice cracking with despair. We have to go. Now. Kyla, face set with determination, jammed the Humvee into gear. The vehicle lurched forward, smashing through the gates and plowing through the infected crowd. The base's destruction receded into the distance as they sped away. The base, once a sanctuary, was now a nightmarish wasteland of smoke and fire. Zoe and Kyla drove through the desolate landscape, old wind whipping through the cracked windows. The UN base on the border was their only hope. As they drove, the enormity of their loss began to settle in. Victor and Alexei were gone, their fates sealed in the chaos of the base. The only path forward was to reach the UN base and seek whatever safety it could offer. Kyla glanced over at Zoe, her face pale but resolute. What do we do now? We keep going, Zoe said, her voice steady despite the exhaustion and fear that gripped her. We have to make it to the UN base, it's our only chance. The road ahead was shrouded in uncertainty, the night stretching out before them like an endless expanse of darkness. The journey would be fraught with danger, but hope and determination would drive them forward. As the sun sets on our harrowing journey, we find ourselves on the precipice of hope and despair. Our survivors have braved unimaginable horrors, facing the relentless tide of the infected and the harsh reality of their new world. Thank you for joining us on this chilling adventure. If you've enjoyed the descent into this dark and atmospheric world, be sure to subscribe to Survival Horror Ambience for more tales that test the limits of human endurance and fear. Your support means the world to us, and it's a reminder that we're not alone in our love for gripping zombie story. Until next time, stay vigilant, stay prepared, and remember, in the world of survival horror, every shadow hides a story waiting to be told.